Would you like to learn about customer IAM, often called CIAM? If so, this video is for you. In this video, we will discuss what is customer IAM, why we need customer identity and access management, and the differences between customer identity and access management and traditional identity and access management. So to begin, what is customer IAM? So customer identity and access management is going to be identity and access management focused on the customer, not the internal user. So normally speaking, an organization has internal users, the people that work for the company, and you typically determine who those users are, or you make them prove who they are. You determine what your corporate users are allowed to do, and then you keep track of it. But what do you do with customers that are not your employees? That's where customer IAM falls in. It gives you the traditional Make sure we know who you are, authenticate you, keep track of what you're allowed or determine what you're allowed to do, meaning authorization and accounting of keeping track of what you've done. But we've done it in a customer focused, a customer centric, self service sort of way. So that is what we talk about what is customer identity and access management. So, what do we need? Why do we need this customer IM, CIM solution? So, one thing is scalability. So normally in organizations and identity and access management systems are designed for their employees. So how many employees does an organization have? 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, 50,000, 100,000. So customer, I mean, traditional IM systems scale to a point. But what happens when you're selling customer, your, your client list is 5 million people or 10 million people or 15 million people? Well, now we're going beyond your traditional IM and we need the scalability of customer identity and access management. Now, let's also think about the management overhead. So in a normal environment for identity and access management, when a user leaves, for example, or is terminated or quits, they, their accounts are canceled. Now that's okay when you've got 10,000 employees there, you've got a small staff that does that. But what happens now if you've got 20 million internet customers? What, every time somebody signs up or signs out, we're gonna have to ha have a person manually remove them and add them for the system or what have you and monitor their present permissions, what have you. It's gonna be a management nightmare. Now the other is the speed. So in a corporate environment, you need something, you reach out to the tech support team and maybe within a day it's resolved. But now you're in an environment where you've got something and someone needs to sign up and buy your stuff. And if they don't buy it now, they may not buy it in the future, like in e-commerce, for example. Or if they don't sign up while they're on your website, they might not come back. And that's actually an incredibly common problem. So we're looking for speed to get that user taken care of as fast as possible and keep them happy. And we're looking to make that experience elegant for the user where it's frictionless and they want to do business with us. So that's the, why we need customer identity and access management. It's still identity and access management, which all follows those three things. Who are you or who you claim to be? What are you allowed to do and keep and keeping track of what you've done? But let's now compare and contrast IAM versus customer IAM. Traditional identity and access management focuses on your internal users, your internal identities and what they can do. Now, customer IAM is focused on others, people that don't work for you, your customers, potentially citizens in a country, partner organizations, not your employees or contractors. So it's going to be different. Now, IAM is going to ma manage internal users and contractors. Customer identity and access management is big. So think about everyone. Now, the primary goals of IAM or identity and access management are really to enforce an organization's corporate controls, principle of least privilege and, and audits, have an audit trail for compliances. But now with customer IAM, we're still, we're looking to optimize the user experience and drive that user to onboard themselves and sign up for their own accounts and maximize customer engagement. So we have to be more fun and flexible and easy to use here. When we want the customers to do it themselves, then we have a paid staff that can do it. Now, when we get into scalability, well, here we're talking about something huge. 
IAM systems are built for predictable enterprise workloads. You've got a certain number of servers running it and you know what you need. Now, customer identity and access management needs to deal with scalability and sudden traffic spikes. So, for example, there's a marketing campaign that says 50% off of everything at this retailer for a short period of time. They're going to get a lot of signups real fast. So, customer IM needs to be able to handle that. Now, when it comes to user experience... Identity and access management, look, we want the best experience we can for our employees, but at the end of the day, the company's paying the employees. So if they have those employees go through one or two extra steps, they can say and do that because they're paying the person. But when it's a customer, you want it to be easy. Come buy our stuff. Make it as easy as possible. So now we're getting into a user experience and we're going to work real hard to do that with customer identity and access manager. We're going to make it intuitive and come up with like a magic link or something to make it real easy, sign up and join. Now, with regards to access controls, typically in the enterprise environment, you know, we have some form of a role-based access control. Now, we may use it with other things like attribute-based or context-aware, but it's based upon job functions. So you get hired human resources, it says Mike Gibbs was hired to the enterprise architect team. So immediately that kicks off uh, a system that enables that adds me as a user to the enterprise architect team and the enterprise architect team already has a set of rules and policies that, that enable the enterprise architect team to do what the enterprise architect team needs to do and nothing more. So that's traditional rule based IAM. But in customer based, you don't have users that have a role inside of your organization. So we're typically looking at different attributes or an attribute based access control. And we're going to have a more dynamic policy of user trails, user behavior, behavior preferences, for example, what's normal, what's abnormal, where are they coming from, that type of thing. So we need a little more because we have less control over it. Now, when it comes to IAM in a company, we can be real stringent on it. You can only do this many password resets. You have to do your password reset this frequently. It's often mediated by the IT help desk that gets involved. Now, when we're dealing with customer IAM, we need the customer to be able to do things. After all, we don't want to get, if we've got 10 million and 20 million customers, we don't want to get 20 million trouble tickets about IAM issues. I mean, the company wants to spend their resources selling, uh, delivering services to their clients, what have you, not uh, administrative overhead work. So. You know, different here. Here we've got to make it easy. The users do their registration. They edit their profiles. They consent. They can delegate access to third parties. They can cancel their accounts when they want. So there's a difference in where we focus our compliance and privacy. So with IAM in the traditional environment, we're focusing on basically the regulations for our business, whatever internal audits and internal standards our business needs to protect the business's internal assets. Now, with customer IAM, there's more of a focus on uh, data privacy regulations, like for example, GDPR or CCPA, consent capture, por data portability, breach notifications, all that kind of thing, because it's more focused on the customer than the actual business. Now, lots of differences here when we're talking about authentication. Now, when we're gonna auth authenticate a corporate user, we may have some corporate uh, single sign-ons. We may be using hardware tokens, centralized multi-factor authentication, that kind of thing, which we're in total control over. Now, when it comes to customer IAM, we might be using, hey, log in with Facebook or LinkedIn or something like that, or something like a password listing or an adaptive risk-based multi-factor authentication. So different types of things, lots more identity federations and what have you. So... Now we think about the integration into our systems and the ecosystems, how I am going to have deep internal integration, specifically ties into HR systems, often enterprise directories, internal applications, on-premise infrastructure, cloud applications, what have you. But the customer I am is going to have different connectors to different things, often uh, customer relationship management tools, email commerce systems, email systems, that type of environment, SaaS services, a little bit different. And even uh, security and fraud detection is a little bit different. So with IAM, we're focused on policy enforcement and audit trails of our internal corporate users inside of our corporate perimeter. 
And with customer IM, it's more about uh, looking at the customer devices, maybe device fingerprinted, maybe the be some behavioral analytics, anomaly detection. And we're looking at the customer stuff and potentially even using some AI and risks trying to mitigate threats in real time. So you can see they have different focus, traditional identity and access management versus customer identity and access management. So in this video, we discussed uh, what is customer identity and, access identity and access management, also called CIAM. We discussed why we need customer identity and access management, and we discussed the key differences between customer identity and access management and traditional identity and access management. If you'd like to become a cloud architect, a security architect, a cloud security architect, an AI architect, or any other type of architect, please join me on a free architecture webinar. We run one every week. The link to register for these free webinars is in the description of this video. We'll go over what we do as an architect. We'll talk about the skills you need in various architectural roles. We'll talk about what it takes to get hired in various architectural roles. And of course, we'll answer any career questions you may have about these roles. And it's going to be live and free on Zoom. So sign up. The link is in the description of this video. Also in the description of this video are resources to assist you in your career, uh, documents on how to become a cloud architect or an enterprise architect or an AI architect documents to teach you how to win the interview and it's all free in the description of this video so sign up for some free resources if you enjoyed this video please give it a like uh, subscribe and uh, hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your technology career and leave me a comment it lets me know what you thought of this video or security questions what have you i'd love to hear from you i look forward to seeing you in another video or a free webinar coming soon take care <music>